Hey there, fellas. Today we are at the test track. You want to guess why? I'm about to tell you. We have replaced these brakes, fitted a set of new rotors, new brake pads. But for what purpose? We all know that subconsciously, if you're an experienced driver, you hit a puddle and you drench your brakes, you know that you need to give them a few pumps to get them dry. And we got a bunch of people suggesting we grease the brakes. It seems like there would be a predictable outcome. In theory, they should cease to work altogether, right? Now, we've brought with us all sorts of stuff that we can use to smear the brakes. Motor oil, grease, brake fluid, even some high-temperature lubricant. And so, let's try all of it, the oil, the grease. Also, we're gonna try brake fluid, because there is a certain notion that if you get a leak and it finds its way onto your brakes, that might lead to them failing. This seems to be a no-brainer, right? In your mind, you're expecting something to happen, but what'll actually happen? Well, I suggest we try it and find out. Everything is ready. We've got the race logic in there that's gonna help us get up to exactly the right speed. Plus minus a few tenths won't matter. Accelerate, brake, place the first cone. To have an idea on stopping distance from 80 kilometers an hour. And from there we go whichever direction the grease points us. <laughs> hey, let's do this. Dry rotors. Okay, well, I'm off. Seventy. Okay, excellent, terrific. I mean, it was a bit twitchy, but the wheels didn't lock up and I got to a stop even quicker. They weren't locking up, meaning they had grip, allowing the brakes to work with maximum efficiency. Let's go back to the greasing point. Brake fluid. Some brake fluid got onto the rotors. So we'll finish applying the fluid, which is nice and high quality. Smother it good. Use as much as you like. I won't be touching the brakes. Let's go to the starting line. Because of what's on the road? Grip is a bit lacking. That's 70. Holy cow! Isn't that something? How did that happen? Look at that. I obviously didn't resort to... pumping the brake pedal. I wasn't doing like a 1-2-3. I just held it until the car stopped. And look at the increase in stopping distance. Twelve meters. Here's the situation, guys. From a speed of 80 kilometers an hour, we saw a 12 meter increase in stopping distance. With brake fluid on the rotors. Excellent. So check this out. We are looking good, I was just out. I braked a couple of times to make sure the brakes are clean. And just now I came to a stop from 80 in the exact same spot. Which tells us that the brakes are clean. And so... Now let's go smear them with something else. Anti-seize lubricant. I've got this cool thing. It's a special lubricant that doesn't allow threaded connections to rust and seize. And not just threaded connections. And I suggest we use it next. Excellent. Terrific. Great. Awesome. Yeah, that is very nice. Nice. 
And now let's go check and see what this wonderful ceramic lubricant does. Here we go. 70. Stop. And it did. Holy cow, that took me far. The separator, well, it definitely separated the rotors from the pads. I'm waiting for them to bring the measuring tool. And from there we'll get an idea. As to how far the car has rolled. 24 extra meters. 64 meters overall. That's from 80 Ks. And on rotors covered with that anti-seize compound. That's another 12 meters. That was with the brake fluid. This stuff added another 12. And the overall increase was 24 meters. Okay, well, let's degrease them and apply the next lubricant. Let's go. Automatic transmission fluid. So this is transmission fluid for an automatic gearbox. Some ATF and let's apply it to the brake rotors and see what that does for us. Okay, we've smothered them in ATF, it's all good. Let's see what comes out of this then. Let's go. 70. Holy cow, look at that! The wheel is locked up immediately. That actually startled me, to be honest. Didn't know what to do at first. The reason being, uh, well, that was unexpected. This result is pretty wild. What, that only took me, like, five meters further? Okay, well, then a slight leak from the power steering system isn't much of a hazard. And though you really shouldn't drive like that, but things happen. And if some of this gets onto your brakes, well, you can be the judges. The car stopped reasonably well, as you can see. Next item. Manual transmission fluid. Some transmission fluid. You put this into manual gearboxes, differentials, transfer cases, wherever you have uh, gears turning and uh, bearings. This has got much higher viscosity. ATF is a bit thinner and this stuff is thick. Okay, I'm carrying a bit too much speed. Stop, stop. And it did. Oh wow, can you smell that strong odor of oil? Not yet. The rotors have gotten hot. But this is oil. And not just any oil, but gearbox oil. It's got more viscosity. And as a result, the oil film is much more persistent. Honestly, when I just got on the brake pedal, Nothing was really happening. But then a bit of the oil was cleaned off, and from there it began to break. I'd say that's about an extra... What is it, like 20 meters, maybe? Or 18? From where it stopped with the brakes at baseline and not tampered with... And to this point. Okay, well... Let's degrease them and use the next thing. Motor oil. We also have this. Some nice... motor oil. <laughs> For me some. <laughs> Here we go. Seventy.
What's the deal? It just... It, well... The right wheel started to lock up. At that point, I let off slightly. Got on again, and it didn't lock up the second time around. It seems like the result is exactly the same. You can just write it on the same cone. Now, this is actually quite interesting. The car stopped in precisely the same spot where it did when we... Used the transmission oil. Any sort of discrepancy is very minor, if there even was any. But now we all saw how this worked out. So let's go ahead and degrease the rotors, get them dry, and uh, use something else. Grease. Okay, now it's time to use. This lovely lubricant. All of this started with people asking we apply some grease to the brakes. And there it is, looking good. Now let's go ahead and uh, apply it to the brake rotors and see what it does. Okay, now we get to the interesting part. What started this video in the first place? Put some grease onto the brakes, they said. And so we did. Now let's see what sort of stopping distance we get on greased up rotors. 70. 80. Look at that! Holy cow! The car was quite eager to decelerate. Not bad at all. At certain points, the wheels were even locking up. So I had to carefully work the pedal. And so the difference between clean brakes and uh, rotors that are smothered in grease is... How much would that be? We saw 12 meters, and this looks like a bit over 10 of extra stopping distance. So stopping distance has increased by 10 meters. Compared to dry brakes that aren't covered in anything. You would have thought that with the brakes all greased up, the car would go flying. But that's not the case. The pads... The rotors were clear of it pretty quickly. It didn't leave any film or anything. It was just gone. It really didn't impede brake performance all that much. Now let's degrease the rotors once again and apply a different lubricant. Let me get them nice and dry. And then continue experimenting. Now we're good. The grease didn't have a severe effect on braking performance, but getting it off was a bit of a pain. It actually took me a couple of runs to make sure all of it was burned off and removed. In order to get the brakes back to baseline, performing the way they were before we started this whole thing. Now we're gonna go ahead and return to the pit zone and apply something else. Let's do this. High temperature lubricant. Okay, here's what I suggest we try now. What I have right here is... some high-temperature lubricant. Drop temperature is 350 degrees Celsius. That's when it starts to liquefy. Okay, let's apply it. It's blue and, um... No, oh, check that out. This is brand new. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, we got some high temperature grease on the brakes. Here we go. Seventy. Oh, yeah, so now... No, don't smell anything, it's all good. It's all clear now. We have a winner. Let's go for a walk. All of the cones are signed. I've got this meter, which has been reset. And starting from the point where I started to brake, let's measure the overall stopping distance of the car. Here we go. 80 kilometers an hour is how fast I was going. And let's check the stopping distance. 40 meters. The car needed 40 meters to come to a stop from 80 k's. That's with properly functioning brakes. What do we have next? 45 meters, 90 centimeters. The car stopped here when the brake rotors were covered in ATF. Another name for it would be Dexron. Moving along. And the next cone, that's the 51 meter mark from the entry point. And the cone says on it, Reese. 52 meters, 80 centimeters, that's the brake fluid. And the high temperature lubricant is in the very same spot. Moving along, and what do we got? That there. Those are the oils. Look at that. 58 and a half meters. 58 meters, 60 centimeters. Those are the oils. And both of them gave us the same effect. The motor and the gearbox oil. And by this point, the stopping distance increased by 18 meters. That is quite a lot. So these oils reduce the friction to such a low point that the car comes to a stop God knows where. But we're not even at the end yet. We're only getting to the last cone. And this one is at... 64 meters and 80 centimeters. That's a good 24 meters further compared to clean brakes. But let's see what we got here. And this was the NTC's lube. Yeah, this stuff, it made sure that the pads and the rotor didn't seize, all right? The car blew past its normal stopping distance by a good 24 meters. Yeah, there you have it. Those are the results. And it all started with put some grease onto the brake rotor, which would have been boring on its own. Let's go back and look at all of them. They're arranged in the same exact order as the cones. Well, let's go. We also have this stuff. For cleaning anything that has gotten dirty. Let's apply some of it and see how it cleans the brakes. Okay, now let's give the brakes a clean. I am super curious as to what this compound is going to do. It does a good job cleaning your hands, but will it clean the brake rotor in these conditions? We're about to find out. Here we go. I'd say... I'd say... That's alright. It is a cleaner. 
but it took us to about where the brake fluid did. Next to it we have the high temperature lube. Well, hopefully this was an educational experiment. After all, we really didn't know what to expect going in, what would happen with the grease on the rotors, but we all saw perfectly clear that the grease cone is located around here somewhere. This would have been a bit boring if we'd have stopped at just grease, and so we threw a bunch of other lubricants into the mix. To figure out which ones are dangerous or, I don't know, which ones aren't quite as bad as others? You be the judges, I am just gonna leave it at that. And you saw it all for yourselves? I would recommend you keep your brakes in good condition. Brakes are a critical component. And you'd better make sure they're operational. Because, well, uh, things happen. Very unpredictable things. Okay, well, that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. That's it for this video. Catch you later.